I wish to speak tonight after the message last night when we spoke on seeking the Lord. Seeking the Lord. I believe with all of my heart that the man will accept in the Bible meaning of that term, which means to receive and surrender. The Lord Jesus Christ still the saved. But I believe you have to accept him as he is and where he is. And I don't think you can whittle him down. You've got to bow to him and surrender for what he is and where he is. And he's on the throne. And if you do not love him sitting on a throne, when he comes, He's going to send you to hell. That's the message tomorrow night. But Friday night, the claims of this one, Saturday night, the demands of this one. God just got one issue with me and women. He said, This is my son. This is the son of my love. Hear ye him. That's the only issue between God and man now. Fellow men, listen to the Lord Jesus Christ. And in former days, God spake unto the fathers and the prophets. And but in these last days, He has spoken in the Son. He has many other words. If you do not listen to the Son, there's no word for it. Then with one issue, the Lord Jesus Christ. And last night we talked about seeking the Lord, <clears throat> not bargaining with Him, not trying to swap with Him, not seeking what He has for you, but seeking Him. He's the pearl of great price. You have to sell and you die, potentially. You have to die, like give everything you've got, potentially. I mean it. If you find that great pearl. Tonight, the message that God uses to induce some to seek the Lord until they are found for them. God's never found a way, I suppose, with the Lord to shut up to this book that he's done. And according to the book, he's never found a message yet by the use of he can induce all men to become persistent, humble seekers of the Son. Up to now, he has been able to induce a minority in every generation. And there's no promise until the last revival, which is on the way, I will break out in the day, we thank God. There is coming a day when the knowledge of the Lord shall cover the earth, as the waters cover the sea. When seven women will catch hold, seven women will catch hold of a man's coat tail, and ask for information how to get to the Lord. That's coming, praise God. The great days have to come. But the Lord has one message that He is able to induce some to become seekers of the Lord. The man that ever becomes a persistent seeker, he is the found of the Lord. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, we are 
Christ for the message, for which we do not apologize. The message of all messages that God has since Jesus went back to glory, has been pleased to use more than everything else in the Bible to induce some to become seekers of the Lord. And the text speaks after this while, Fear not the animals kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear of him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now I'll listen to that. The Lord said, let not be so much afraid of a man who can kill your body, but rather fear him who is able to destroy, not annihilate, the bread, to destroy the soul and body in hell. Fear him. Fear him. According to the word of God, God's never been able to find the two motives that he can use to appeal to get sight. One was the fear of hell, and the other is the book of the Lord. And I wish to speak tonight on that message. What is the message that's calculated to induce some people to seek Christ? The Bible mentions the vanity of the world. The Bible mentions the world of sin. The Bible mentions the vileness of iniquity. The Bible mentions the joy of the saints, but always, and especially, in this religious hardened age, when everybody's gone to church and made some sort of profession, but where the crime rate grows up every day, always and especially in this religious generation who do not know the power of godliness, the one and the best message that God has always used to induce someone to seek the saving interest in the blood of Christ is the awful truth of the horrors Okay. Now I know Jesus Christ. I know that I cannot well stare any man into seeing the glory of God in the face of Christ. I know that I cannot well stare any man in the holy faith by start terror, but I also know that in terror of soul, some men can be induced to seek redeeming faith at the feet and the hand of the Lord Jesus by wrong and the severity of God's holy law, where sinful in this life means God will destroy your utterly ruin both your body and soul. Where it is? In hell. In hell. In hell. Now there's nothing on earth to keep a sinner from seeking the Lord. There's some things a sinner can't do. He cannot give himself a new heart. He does not have the ability to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody but a fool or a person born again could possibly believe that Jesus is the Christ. You just can't do that in your own mind. Sit. Talk about a fellow born of a woman without a human father. That's got him since knows that can't happen. But it did. Well, it can't possibly happen. The natural mind can't accept that. 
Little dark guy in St. Smooth that God wouldn't be born in a cow stable. Little dark guy in St. Smooth that God wouldn't come to this earth and live and despise Nazareth, which no good thing ever came. Any like that in sense knows that God wouldn't allow himself to be hung on a cursed tree outside the city of Jerusalem. Who did? See, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, neither can he. The Spirit will deserve it. He don't. You got to be born of the Spirit in order to be able to lay hold on Jesus Christ. Is that right? There's no difference in the time there. It doesn't happen. You're born in the Spirit and you're able to go to Christ at the same time. But the babies cry when it's delivered from this mother's body is a sign that it's alive. Amen. And repentance and faith in the birth can be known as by its results. And its results are a life of repentance to a God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that right? There's nothing on earth to keep men from seeking the Lord except the fact they feel no need of it. Men feel the need of money. And they drive themselves to premature graves to get it. We feel the need of this and that and the other. And we'll stomp on everything that gets in our way in order to achieve. But men feel no need. Apart from the work of God's grace, arresting him, crossing his path, bringing him to his senses. But the chief thing the Lord is a already found the resting place in the place where they have peace and a measure of satisfaction and have no further need. God always meets the sinner at the part of need. Most sinners do not realize that they need the Lord Jesus Christ. It's always been that way. You know, I might misquote it in Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 13. There's a description why God had to call prophets to go with his people, the Israelites nation, Jeremiah 2 13. The Holy Spirit says for my people, Understand, my people are the mean saved people. That's the elect covenant nation of the Jews. I think we touched on that last night. That does not mean that God's people, God's saved people, have done this. It means God's elect nation, most of whom never will see. Is that right? If my people, my people have done what? They've committed two evils. This time, I believe we knew that they they have first forsaken me. They quit God. They give up all protection. Paul and after God. That's true of nine some church members. They made some sort of profession. They were honest and sincere. But long since, although their names are still on the road, when they show up every once in a while. They put all pretense of following the world. My people have committed two evils. They forsake me, says God, the fountain of living water. And that's bad enough. But the second evil they've committed cuts the climax. In addition to forgiving God and forsaking Him, they hew out systems. They are broken systems, says the Spirit, but people don't think so. And that they hold on up, and they think from the systems, they hew out themselves, and it satisfies them. This is a self-satisfied age in the church now. Everybody's getting on fine, thank you. No need to seek the Lord. We 
he was our sister with the grace of God's sister. There was little more with the sickly. But the had to ask for peace when Sunday night I feel about my sister. I had to have some peace so I became a miracle to try to hide from God. And I found a lot of satisfaction and peace and rest in calling myself an infidel and seeing there wasn't any God and I'd be in there tonight. The one that God just wouldn't quit and he never would. They let me go and finally he routed me out and held me up naked and my old broken system wouldn't satisfy any longer. And I began to hunger for him. You know, the rest of the days, they felt no need. They had access to the cross of the covenant. They were in the covenant. God made a covenant with them. And because they were in the covenant, they had access to the gospel of blood. But they never believed it, they never were saved. But to get along just fine, thank you, they hewed them out some systems. And they drank water out of their own systems. And they were just like people I hope you try to witness to today. They're not one bit interested in the Lord Jesus Christ. They're perfectly satisfied. They get along just fine. They're drinking out of their own system. So they're not rushing to God. In the New Testament, in the book of John's Gospel, chapter 5, and verse 39, we we'll read these cryptic words. Ye are constantly, John 5, 39, the Lord Jesus talking to the Jewish leaders who later had him crucified. Before we have his miracles and all his mighty works of deeds. And he said to them, Ye are constantly, he didn't beg them to search the scriptures, he, he said, That's all you do, you're constantly searching the scriptures. And the reason you are great Bible students, these Jews were, they were constantly searching the scriptures and not doing violence, as exactly what it says there. You are constantly searching the scriptures. And the reason you are constantly searching the scriptures is for in them you think you have eternal life. You see, a lot of Baptists going to hell trust in the doctrine. I know lots of Baptists going to go to hell because they found out the doctrine of election and they made election God. But election didn't die for you. It's a blessed truth that it won't save you. Huh? And these Bible teachers, scribes and Pharisees and leaders, he said, you're constantly searching the scriptures for you. He said, you have eternal life. See, they had peace. They had peace. They knew the scriptures. They said, they were Bible students. And they found their peace and their satisfaction, their joy in their Bible study. But he said, the scriptures you're constantly searching, and you said that in there, in the scriptures you have eternal life, says, all that good part is to testify. So eternal life is not in the scriptures. It's in the one the scripture is talking about. And said, that's me. And the next verse says, because you're satisfied with your Bible study, and constantly searching out the scriptures and think that fixes it all up. And you're perfectly satisfied. The next verse says in the Greek, you desire not to desire you desire not to desire to come to me that you might have life. You think you know why you got life because you search the scriptures and read the book. But there no God except to testify me. And you want to come to me. Where is your place of satisfaction in me? I wish you'd ever 
tomorrow night and I try to beg you to come, but God knows I wish you can. Are you satisfied and have perfect rest for holding a bloody cross and an enthroned Christ? Where is your satisfaction? Where is it that fits it so you sleep good at night? And sin on your way during the day? Is it Christ? Is it Him? What is it? What is it? Oh, there's nothing to keep men from seeking the Lord. Except most of them don't feel in need, and the reason they feel in need, they're already satisfied. The scriptures say there's pleasure in sin, then, for it seems we are. And there are God's many, and they'll stand in good stead till the day of trouble comes, and then they'll vanish away. Then the stick is closer than a brother. It's him that you're bidden to seek. Hell is the message God uses to induce men and women to leave their broken systems of where they in the water. And go to the system of living water, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we bring them out of the the threefold message of faith. You see three things when you study what the Bible says about hell. First, hell reveals the character and nature of Almighty God. Hell reveals a God whose indignation shall flame against sin throughout and on the earth and the earth. Hell reveals the fact that every jot and tittle of God's holy law, every jot shall be dotted and every, every tittle shall be jot and every jot shall be lying. Everything about the law will be carried out in its full capacity when God brings judgment on men and women. God has eyes so dark that he cannot look on sin nor the whole iniquity. Hell gives the lie to the damnable lie that we put all our lives that God hates the sin and loves the sinner, but that's just not so. For you can't separate the sin from the one who commits it. God does not look with complacent love on a man when he throws the smoke of his unbelief in the nostrils of a holy God. God loves such a man enough to pity him. God loves such a man enough to desire the salvation, for God frankly desires the salvation of all men. He hadn't decreed the salvation of He desires that all men be saved. When they came mad, they were born to say, He be tickled. Hell says that God is holy, Christ holy. Hell says that God will send you to hell. Before he'll save you without his holy law being perfectly satisfied. Hell says that God will punish sin. Hell says that God will punish all sin. 
جو ہاں مجھے میری Oh, 
the darkness is there without breaking the spirit of lawlessness in them. And the same way without putting in them a desire to do the will of God which is expressed in the law of God. The message of hell with many men
were told that men were treated not. They cursed them and blasphemed them. The hotter the fires got, the more they cursed them. Like an uncapped hell tonight, you hear men cursing God in hell tonight. There's nothing to restrain them. All the stored up hostility that ranges in the heart of men and women that's deceitful and desperate with wicked, it's nothing to restrain it in hell. And hell will be one place where everybody's got everybody else in utter contempt. To hate him, were it not for the common grace of God and the spring of the gospel and the Holy Spirit, you could hear people in the homes around this building cursing God right now. They hate him. It's not a pleasant picture, but God will unbear your heart and show you the utter corruptness of your heart. Even though you'll never seek him for a new heart. To be purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. If I could preach a God who has no power, this generation like him. If I preach a God who is not holy, this generation like him. If I preach a God who saves people out of death, not out of grace, this generation is like him. But if I preach a God who does whatsoever he pleases, both in heaven and earth, this generation said, I don't want that. If I preach a God who is thrice holy, and said, Be ye holy, even as I am holy, men hate that kind of a God. If I preach a God who owns mankind salvation, people will say, I like that. But if I preach a God who must be right, but he just may show mercy, I let church people grind their teeth at me about that. Man has a satanic fear of it. And the third thing I not only does it have a satanic spirit, not only does it have a satanic fear of it, he's a God hater, but it has a satanic faith. In Matthew 25, 41, the Lord Jesus said, Depart from me, ye curse it. In the everlasting power, prepared for the devil and his angels. That doesn't mean that me and Satan are just surprised. That doesn't mean that Satan, that hell is just prepared for the devil and his angels. That means that when men die, God won't punish them with a fate like the one who won't punish the devil with. Satan got in trouble by rebellion. That's your trouble, my friend. You will not have him going over you. And your faith shall be that of the devil. He's going to cast him to the lake of fire and brimstone to burn forever. So are you. So are you. There's one more revelation of hell. Not only is it a revelation of the moral character of the Holy God, not only is it a revelation of the awful satanic spirit, fury, and destiny of men, but it's a blessed, blessed revelation of the glory of the cross of Calvary. My friends, if there's no hell, then men cannot leave from anything. Why, Christ on the cross. I remind you the blood of Christ doesn't save you from temporal cannabis due to sin. Your body still must die. There are women bring children in the world in intense pain. You never If there's no awful guilt, why free? If there's no awful penalty for sin, why free the Christ? If there's no final judgment, why flee the Christ? If there's no eternal destruction, why flee the Christ? But if there is also guilt, in God's name for your sin sake, seek the Lord. If there is also cancer, the wages of sin is dead, then seek the Lord. If there is final judgment, never jot and 
evil of the word of God, the law shall be utterly vindicated. Then seek the Lord. If there is eternal destruction from the presence of the Lord, in the glory of his power, in God's name, my friend, seek the Lord, seek the Lord, seek the Lord. But on Calvary's cross, hell wants to the glory of the glory of when I go on, you don't love him anymore on the cross. Brother, naked, crushed, broken, dying for you, you love him. You love him. The word of Calvary is a little song was saying when I was a girl, I love to see a revival come to our churches and we go sing again with the humble word of Jesus loved me. This I know. All the Bible tells me so. It belongs to him belong. They are will be as strong. The heart of the day on the dark background so that the light God's love and forgiveness of sin and awful mercy transected there in the glory of the of the cross there's glory there's glory Ever since I was in Yellowstone National Park many years ago, and we gave me a guide book as I went into the park, and I was interested in the description of the handkerchief pool. I read about it, made my way to it, a little pool of water, artesian water, hot. But the you couldn't see the bottom, it's a small pool. And the first thing caused the sex and white men discovered the park. They'd come with an old dirty handkerchief and a piece of dirty rag. And they hold it like this and let the bubbling boiling water pull it down until it burned the finger a little bit and pull it up and shake it out. And it'd be perfectly quiet. And I made my way. And I got out there to the empty pool. And I took an old empty if I'd actually been using to clean the spark of the old pool. And I held it like this and I let the boiling water pull it down. And seemed to touch my finger and I pulled it up. I spread it like this. And it was as pure as it would in snow. And I stood there and the pool had come down. Come on. Bring it down. Come on. What ways for condescension? Come on. Now, let us read in the good. Let us start. They said, we're by the snow. They said, we're by the kingdom. They said, we're pure of gold. And without being conscious of it, I began to see there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from the mangrove trees, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all of their state. The dying thief rejoice to see that fountain in his day and there not me and there have I the wise he washed all my sins away I am conscious I sing and that tap me on the shoulder 
Well, the drone must have been at least a hundred feet of gravel at that. No telling what was happening near the station, no telling what happened. And they said, let us sing with you. And I let them in the singing and they thought to me, is the greatest single verse of song ever written. And there from New York and Texas, from California and Florida, from Canada, a little company of men and women, brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, who've been back to a place of trouble, they were cried in the Lord, and he answered us, delivered us, and saved us. We sang together for the Jesus Christ. 